You're listening to Affected by Altitude, a Colorado Rockies podcast for and by Rockies fans on Rocky Mountain Rooftop. Thank you for joining us as we discuss all things baseball and Colorado Rockies. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special episode here of Affected by Altitude, a Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Rocky Mountain Rooftop Network, part of the Fans First Sports Network. I am your regular host, Skyler Timmons, and joined by a special guest today, friend of the show, returning once again to chat here. It's uh, the voice of the Fresno Grizzlies, the Rockies' Loe affiliate, Stephen Rice. Stephen, welcome once again. Hey, thanks for having me as usual. Can't wait for the 2024 season. Yeah, and it... it I think in years past, and you can probably attest to this, well, the the major league team is going through their rebuild, doing their thing. A lot of people in that are really following the Rockies are really excited about the farm system. I think there's a lot of exciting pieces coming through there. And I don't know if that's you know, something you've been feeling this off season at all or, or how the off season is going for you in general. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy because now, you know, another year with the Rockies and, you know, I feel for the big league team because a rebuild is always tough and I hate using that word. But mm -hmm. when you see the group of guys that we've had here in Fresno that are continuing to elevate their game at the next step every single uh, year, you know, you can't, you can't get more excited about something like that. And another great group of prospects that should be coming to Fresno this year. And hopefully we'll get a guy like Chase Dahlander, the right-hander from Tennessee. But there's a lot of guys in the system for the Rockies that make things fun to watch. And every year we've seen guys from Drew Romo, Ezekiel Tovar, Zach Veen, Adiel Amador, Yankel Fernandez. We've seen some pitching prospects that are going to be good down the line in Jordy Vargas, even some surprise prospects in Zach Agnos, Michael Prosecki. Over the years, we just continue to get – all these amazing players that the Rockies continue to find, continue to develop, and they're going to get to the big leagues at year two. I mean, we could have a couple of returners and Andy Perez and Bryant Betancourt, who are young, very talented players that might need another year under their belt. We also might get a couple other guys, for instance, outfielder Robert Callas, who hopefully will come over from the Dominican, follow a similar path that Fernandez, Amador, uh, guys like that have used over the past couple of years, or even – uh, another shortstop prospect in Braylon Wimmer from South Carolina that goes along with the pitching staff uh, that could really become outstanding. I mean, we have a, a really good rotation from guys from Jake Madden to Albert Pacheco, who joined us in the back half of last year. So lots of really good prospects. And that's just a part of what the Grizzlies and myself have done this off season is look at all this talent. Yeah. And I think that would be the fun thing is you know, we've talked about before you're in there on the ground floor ready to see these guys really in their their first stint of professional baseball you know in, a, in the rigorous i guess schedule yeah. of a regular season yeah as opposed to you know playing down the arizona complex league 100%. and everything and i think we talked to you a little bit before the grizzlies season ended last year but yeah. you're able to get a couple of guys there near the end you know it's from some of the 2023 draft picks yeah. talked about kyle Karras before and, and cole carrick some of those other guys yeah. But even some of those pitchers were able to make an appearance, I think. Uh, yeah, Seth Halverson? We saw Kay Denton. Uh, Kay Halverson Denton. actually skipped us. So if we get That's Halverson right. down here, I'm not going to say no to that. But we saw <laughs> Isaiah Coupe as well. We saw Son, uh, Sean Sullivan for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, these guys are so talented. And, you know, as a lot of teams see, you know, when you get a chance to see a guy for a little bit, you know, you expect them to join you again. But when you have a guy who already gets a couple weeks of experience, it actually goes a long way for their development. Mm -hmm. um, an example I like to give is a guy like Bryce McGowan, who joined us at the back half of 2022, and the numbers weren't as expected for him. Joined us at 2023, and all of a sudden, this and the numbers were outstanding. He got to AAA Albuquerque. And, you know, you look at these guys over the years, Duke and Darnell, a guy who joins us for a little bit, does big and better things. And, you know, now you have guys like Kate Denton who comes in, he's has the frame, has the size, has the pitchability that we saw when he was at college at Oral Roberts. And we hope that he can join us on the back end of the bullpen and continue to dominate. You know, you have guys like Isaiah Coupe, who's just 
ninety percent breaking ball. Uh, you know, a youngster, super small size, but you see a lot of the pitch ability that he had at Ohio State, and you hope that these guys can come in and help you guys out in the bullpen. And you know, as you mentioned, Taros and Carrick, that if they both return to this lineup in the middle of the lineup, can you imagine here at Chansey Park in twenty twenty four? Yeah, so it, it's fun to to see the potential there with your with the squad that could come in this yeah. year, and you probably won't know your roster until into spring training and everything. Yeah. But you can probably have a good idea uh, of guys you expect to see or potential. And one to ask: Is there anybody like thinking of when you look through the Rockies minor league system? You're thinking like, man, I, I hope you get, I hope I get to see him in Fresno and call call the action for him you know i i think there's one guy specifically that i think has been kind of a uh an interesting name from the 2023 draft and it's jack mahoney the right-handed mm -hmm. pitcher he just has some stuff that just works really well i mean he has he has not only the the movement the accuracy the velocity but this is a guy that pitched in the sec and when you have a guy who has that talent um, has already faced that talent, you're always going to see success. I mean, as you can see over the past couple of years, guys who have played um, in bigger and higher conferences, they've actually done a great job um, adapting to this level. Skylar Messenger last year went to Texas, a Big 12 school that understands how to pitch well. Or you see guys like a Sterling Thompson who went to Florida. And you see these guys that understand what to do because they've already faced that talent. And mm -hmm. you have a guy like Jack Mahoney who not only could be a back-end bullpen guy, he also could be and when you have a guy that you can trust going out there every couple of days, you know you're going to get a lot of Ws right off the bat, or a guy who can pitch out of the bullpen that can lock it down and get some wins that maybe a lot of teams may not have is that back end bullpen. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that's a big thing. We're always focusing on you know, the Rockies need starters. Yeah. What's the status of starters and the depth throughout the system? But there's a lot of intriguing bullpen arms, and this is something that. You know, I, I think we're hearing more from the Rockies in the off season and their prepping is less a specific type of pitcher, but in the bullpen, it seems like they're really honing in on some power arms guys that can come in and, and just gas it, shut things down at the end. Well, I think that's the big thing. Last year we saw Zach Agnos came in with 27 saves for us. And Agnos was a guy that was actually a two-way player in college. But when they saw him as a pitcher, this was a guy that was getting the speed between 94 to 96, but he also had a good breaking ball which mm -hmm. is something that you always look at, especially at Coors Field, is a guy that can mix and match with it. So when you have a power arm that can come in also with a good breaking ball, you know you're going to find success with it. So having a guy like Agnos was huge. And when you look at these guys that are also down in the DSL that are coming through, Wardo Fernandez was a guy that joined us the back half of last year. And even though the numbers weren't fantastic, you know, a guy still getting used to pitching here, mm -hmm. 97 to 100. It works mm -hmm really well to have that kind of stuff so you're hoping that one or two of these guys pan out and you know that's i think the fun thing about baseball is that all these guys show talent here but what can they do when they continue to develop yeah and some that i was excited about in the this offseason one of the big announcements was the introduction of the new pitching new coaching changes and you know down there in fresno you're getting caesar galvez uh caesar galvez from or no pardon me rolando garza Yes. Cesar Galvez is your bench coach returning. Yes, yes. Uh, but Rolando Garza, who was the Tampa Bay Rays pitching coordinator, yeah. is now coming in on the ground floor there in Fresno. And you now I see in that name of attached to Tampa Bay, we know how good pitchers have been there and you know, excited about him coming to Fresno. So when when we found out that Rolando Garza was coming, of course, you, everyone does their research about who this guy is. And I'm sitting there going, how did we get a race pitching coordinator yeah. <laughs> to come join the Rocky system? First of all, kudos to the Rockies for being able to get, find a guy like this. But also, when you look more into what Rolando Garza is all about, this was a guy who spent time with a Korean specialist where he went off to Korea and learned how guys can use their power, but also use their frames correctly so they mm -hmm. won't get hurt they can get the most out of their pitching. And so when you have a guy that can come in that has big league experience, has been around a lot of big league pitching, especially in the race system that have continued to found, uh, find postseason su success, this guy's going to come in and be able to help a young group of guys not only learn how to pitch, but also how to learn how to use their bodies correctly on and off the field. This is a guy that's going to be able to train them properly, a guy that's also going – to help the injuries. We saw a lot of injuries last year mm -hmm. in the Rocky system, especially 
on the pitcher side of things. And we hope that a guy like this can come in and help these guys find a way to get to the big leagues in a couple of years. And yeah, I mean, even though there's some success here in single and Fresno, you know, it's going to take a couple of years for these guys to mature and get to the big leagues. But we've seen it over the years where a guy like Blair Calvo, who in 2021 was a back end piece for our team. And now he had pitched in the big leagues or guys like Dugan Darnell, who's right on the doorstep. Mm -hmm. uh, guys at the Rockies continue to develop properly and they're finding ways to get to the big leagues. Yeah. And I think that's the big solution to solving pitching for the Rockies is I think a big thing is finding a philosophy and setting one in place where it's been, uh, we're just going to get aging veterans and who can just get it over the plate. We try sinker ballers. Maybe we'll try a, a hard throwing guy in there. But I think, bringing in Garza, or Garza was exciting to me. It was like, oh, getting him on the ground floor and yeah. get these guys good habits that they can carry through the system. Then they go to, to Spokane or to Hartford. And like, oh, I learned this in Fresno this season. Here, I'm going to share it with my teammate here who started the year here in Double A. And I think that's something that's not only just with pitching, but also with all of our coaches as well. Mm -hmm. Cesar Galvez, Steve Solis, even Trevor Burmeister. Our whole staff is really about getting these guys learning the right things right away so then when they do get to the big leagues they're already ready to go or even to double a triple a so on and so forth i think a lot of what steve Solis brings and what a lot of rolando guards is going to bring is that experience of being in the big leagues being around guys who've been successful steve Solis was in the angel system for a long time and learned behind guys like mike Sosha, who understands mm -hmm. how to get a guy ready and so when you have a coaching staff that can help you as a player, not only are you going to be successful on the field, but you're also going to be successful off the field. You take what you learn from, you know, doing basic mechanics to all of a sudden getting to the next level. And now you're going to maybe teaching a guy who isn't putting in the right steps to being successful. And I think that's always going to help. But mm -hmm. I mean, people don't realize what the Rockies are truly doing down mm -hmm. in the minor league system. And when it does hit into the big leagues, Oh man, it's going to be so much fun to watch when the Rockies can say that they get to the playoffs and then as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's seeing around on social media like there, there's the prospect rankings, the farm yeah. rankings that come out, and a lot of people are sometimes lower on the Rockies. They're like 24th, you know, they're down in that bottom half. Yeah. You no, know, as someone watching the Rockies farm teams every day, following the prospects, does that kind of annoy you a little bit, or do you like? Kind of like you were saying, like, they just don't know what we're doing yet. You know, it's kind of a mix of both. I mean, you're going to have your talent anyway, <laughs> yeah. right? Every team has their group of guys. But when all of a sudden I read uh, and the top 100 prospects doesn't have an Adi Alamador on it, mm -hmm. I kind of sit here and I go, are they, <laughs> do they know what they're doing? I know that you do this for a living, but you missed out on one of the best players in not only the Rocky system, in the NL West as a whole, and you're not going to rank them in the top 100. And you're going to list some other guys that are also talented, but you would think that would be ahead of certain players here and there. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I grew up where you always want to have a chip on your shoulder mm -hmm. right? <laughs> where you have an organization that has uh, an idea that maybe people don't care about what we're doing or uh, don't understand what we're doing. It makes it a whole lot sweeter when it does work out. And at the yeah. same time too, if it doesn't, then you can say, all right, well, maybe they're right a little bit and it is what it is. And, you don't have to lose out on stuff. I think that's why mm -hmm. when you see, for instance, like the Orioles where they have all these guys ranked or the Cubs, and if it doesn't work out for those teams, then you look at them, you go, where'd you mess up? When the Rockies mm -hmm. don't have as many people, you can say, okay, well, if they do become successful, look what they did. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. they weren't there to start with. So I think that's also kind of a, a plus and a minus when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time too, chip on your shoulder, prove why you deserve to be there. And if you're not going to get ranked, go prove why you deserve to be ranked in a year or two years from now. Yeah. I think that's the perfect approach. And I think that's the way the Rockies view it. And I think Bud Black mentioned it at fan fest. Somebody asked him uh, about having to face the Dodgers in the NL West with everything they've done this off season, you know, dropping a <laughs> 1 billion on guys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he's like, you know, we like being the Dave, David trying to take down the behemoth, taking down Goliath. That's who we yeah. want to be. And and I think I agree with that with the with the minor leagues. You know, if that system, play with that chip. They don't believe in us. We're going to prove them wrong. You know, Rocky show faith in us. We're going to prove them right. Ezekiel Tovar was never ranked really anywhere on any charts years ago. And now he's the starting shortstop for the Rockies. And mm -hmm. a guy who had a very good first true season 
and he's going to come in and be even better and better. And Tovar is a long-term solution that people had no idea existed in the system. And, mm -hmm. you know, injuries happen and stuff like that go on. But at the same time, too, the Rockies know what they're doing. You want to put guys in positions if you didn't trust their knowledge. You have tons of experience of, you know, coordinators from um, Jerry Weinstein to uh, Clint Hurdle. You know, guys who have big league time who mm -hmm. understand how to work with these players. And so can you imagine being 19, 20 years old? You're going to come to Fresno in a AAA-esque ballpark that continues to get better mm -hmm. and better at the single-A level. Then Hurdle will come in and teach you how to hit a little bit. Or you have a guy like Steve Solis who has tons of big league experience telling you what mm -hmm. to do every single day. That is something that you don't get in a lot of other places. Yeah all the development coaches and other places and what we have here is better than a lot of other places and that's what makes us amazing yeah and who doesn't love the prospect of i don't know some some guy that just went into the hall of fame could be <laughs> turning up and maybe teach you a thing or two hanging out in your dugout for a day it's it's so fun when you hear that these guys can come through and you know it it makes me even giddy as someone who isn't a player you know, seeing these guys, they get to come in and get to learn right off the bat from these guys. It's it's something that is not only cool for them, but it's also cool for myself to be a part of it. Yeah. And, and speaking on that that note here, uh, what was your reaction? Learn about Todd Helton getting the announcement to go to the Hall of Fame. Oh, he get in. I mean, it's it's always hard because the Hall of Fame is so it's everyone has their opinions about, you know, and that's what it is. It's all about a vote. But a guy like Todd Helton is uh, the perfect person for the Hall of Fame and to represent the Rockies is outstanding, too. And I hope that he continues to grow his brand and I hope more Rockies can join in the future. I don't know, mm -hmm. um, you know, down the line, how many more are going to get in because that's just how it works. But Todd Helton's the perfect guy that could get in for that. Yeah, many a tears were shed by many uh, Colorado kids on yes. that day. <laughs> I'm very happy. It, it's always fun when you get a chance to meet a guy who's in the Hall of Fame or be around a guy who gets in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, I think everyone was sweating when he was around that 74, 75%. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a very stressful day for everyone. But we never have to worry about it again. Thank goodness. <laughs> but shifting gears here, uh, I wanted to talk to just a little bit about you know, what the Grizzlies have going on for this upcoming season. You've released promos or the promotional giveaways, which minor league baseball has some of the best promotionals in baseball. One is minor league baseball is super fun. So you can you have a little bit more freedom to do a little bit more fun things to draw people into the ballpark along with the product on the field. But uh what promotions do you have? Uh, any favorite promotions you got coming up this season that you're excited about? Well, something that the Grizzlies do, which I think is outstanding, is we always try to put a promotion with every the 2024 season and every season. The one promotion that I absolutely love is actually going to happen in late April on April 26th. It's going to be halfway to Halloween. Now, what I like about this day specifically is we have four promotions on one given day. So not mm -hmm. only is it halfway to Halloween, which is presented by Premier Valley Bank as well, too. We also have a community outreach night that is part of our partnership with Chichance Gold Resort and Casino. And on a night worth halfway to Halloween, a lot of the community that's going to be out here are going to have trick or treat candy to give away to a lot of our fans that come to there. And me being who I am, too, I'm going to go try to see if I can get a couple Kit Kats along with it. <laughs> so don't be surprised if that happens. But it's always nice when you have the community join for a big day like that. Mm -hmm. We also have a giveaway. We have a tote bag giveaway for the first 1,500 fans. And I don't know about you, but tote bags are like one of my favorite things in the universe. When you go to the store or you go anywhere else, who doesn't love to be able to carry something around for easily and a tote bag giveaway while you have candy possibility on halfway to Halloween. Mm -hmm. So we also have Friday night fireworks to finish off the evening and we're facing the San Jose giants, which is always a fun matchup. So, you know, that's just part of the promotions that we have too. But of course we always have our go-to star Wars night. We have our 4th of July extravaganza, of course, our home opener with a magnet schedule giveaway. Um, you know, we have a really couple great weekends as well too. Um, we have a Fresno tigers night, which will, promote our history of um black heritage and 
um, a replica jersey giveaway on Fresno Tigers night as well, too. Uh, Fresno Tacos are back again. Well, of course, we always got to rock the sleeveless with it. Um, we're going to have the Low Riders Day Fresno for a three day weekend that's going to have not only fireworks, but also special food offerings for all mm-hmm. of those. And every year, of course, we celebrate Mother's and Father's Day. And last year, we had a walk off on both of those nights. So we're hoping that fans can come out and see some more good baseball. Mm-hmm. And who doesn't love coming to the ballpark with some family and friends and enjoy a beer, enjoy a hot dog? It's it's something for everybody. But, you know, we've been working on this promo schedule pretty much since last year ended. And uh, a big kudos to our director of marketing, Jonathan Bravo, and a lot of our upper management for being able to get a lot of these put together and our corporate team to finding some partners that are going to be a part of these amazing nights as well, too. You know, we have your chance to gold resort and casino for a have you know calviva health is going to be joining us for a meat blue and bingo night for the mm-hmm. youngins that love to go watch that amazing pup um and so you know we have great partnership with everybody and it's a whole team effort to put something together like this and there's going to be some more promotions added some more sponsors added to everything so if you haven't seen our promo schedule yet you can go to our website fresnogrizzlies.com and look at our promotion single game tickets will be available in a couple weeks for fans to start getting those tickets and i recommend getting your tickets sooner rather than later just because those big nights as we said will sell out very fast yeah yeah and and i think it's what i love here with in especially in the rockies minor league system is not we have really great affiliates that you all have wonderful promotions do a great job very solid fan bases for your teams and communities and it's really awesome to see to know laid those seedlings because then when those guys get up to the the rockies oh plenty of those fans in fresno i'm sure will be tuning in and that's and that's our goal at california is some you know we have the greatest fan base in the universe they come out and they get excited about not only what's going on on the field a lot of amazing things around the ballpark that we've continued to add over the years. You know, we had just put in a new field last year. We have, you know, a big video board that's been here for a couple of years now and getting to play, uh, you know, amazing things for our fans every single day is what we're all about too. And, you know, this year our slogan is G's up and, you mm-hmm. know, everything that is here in Fresno, we, as you said, it's ground level and you can only go up from here. And that's kind of where we're about here is, Everything that we do is always on the up. We always do a great job of putting things together and we care about our community. We care about downtown Fresno and, you know, be able to put this together for our fans every single day. It's so much fun and kudos to all of our other affiliates as well, too. I mean, I love to see what our our crew out there in Albuquerque is doing as well. I know we talked to them a good amount in Hartford and Spokane and everyone else. They just see what these teams do and the Rockies again. You know, there's not a lot of affiliates that put on what we can do at all of our Yeah. Class. Yeah. It's awesome to see. Uh, before we let you go here, get back to your busy life and everything. Yeah. Uh, do you have any bold predictions for the major league team heading into 2024? Or anything that you're kind of keeping an eye on or looking forward to for the for the Rockies? You know, so last year I said Ezekiel Tovar was going to lead the team in doubles. And Mm -hmm. I think Ezekiel Tovar is actually going to hit over 275 this year. So that's my big one. Of course, got to get the old Grizzlies with it. I think Hunter Goodman makes the uh, team out of camp. And I think Hunter Goodman will have at least eight home runs before the All-Star break. Um, Mm -hmm. A guy with a lot of power that people don't really expect uh, to do big things like this. And I think he'll get an opportunity to do amazing things. But I think the Rockies are going to hold their own. I think they're going to be a team that can do really good things. I don't see them being over 100 losses this year. I think this is a team that's going to find a way to get wins. They're going to be healthy, you know, and so I think that staff is going to be a little bit better as well too. And I just hope that everyone follows what Bud Black's vision is and what this team's all about. Um, You know, my big predictions is that they're going to be a lot better than they were last year. And I think that's something that a lot of people can be excited about. And I think all the affiliates are going to have good years as well too. Albuquerque's Mm -hmm. going to have a lot of good players this year. I think Hartford's going to have a lot of good players. We're going to have a good team as well, too. So don't be surprised if all the Rockies affiliates have 500 or over 500 win percentages at the end of the 2024 season. Yeah, I think the last time you were here was your prediction Rockies would be World Series champions. It was like within five years or within in five, five years. years. Yeah, I mean, just kind of stay healthy. That's the big thing. But once you start getting this crew of guys that come up here, uh, can you imagine the amount of home runs that Yankeel Fernandez could hit or what Benny Montgomery or Sterling 
oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to see it. And if you know if you haven't got your tickets yet for not only Grizzlies or even for Rockies games, make sure you. This is gonna be an outstanding year that people are not gonna expect, and it's more memorable seasons that we can't wait to be a part of. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, also, when are we getting our uh, Fresno Grizzlies Hard Knock show up and running, Stephen? We get, we got to get this done. That's that's the thing is we have to find more characters to get on this because you can't just have this face all the time. I mean, Parker can do so. Parker can do so much too, but you know, give us a little bit of time to get that Hard Knocks going. But <laughs> when it does happen, it's must watch TV. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I'm, I hesitate to share this. I've always had an idea to make an office like show, but just call it the front office and dealing with some minor league team. It could be even an indie ball team. It's always oh, been my, my idea. It, it would be something that would be so fun to watch. I mean, we have a lot of fun here and I think that's something that hopefully will resonate with everybody in not only central Valley, but around the world that we have fun here. The stuff that we do is fun. Our baseball, minor league baseball is so enjoyable and i hope people get a chance to see all of it play out onto the field and that's something that we're super proud of so whatever gets a chance to do it we get to see a really cool behind the scenes but i also would be kind of scared to see myself in like hd even for you <laughs> i don't can you even imagine you know fishbowl face going yeah <laughs> but hey maybe we, we can pitch it to to jerry gergich who's coming from parks and rec it's for one of your nights, we'll pitch to him. So that's going to be on May 25th. So once single game tickets go on, I expect everyone, including you, to come down to come watch them. And <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun, too. Fresno Parks and Rec Night is something that you guys do not want to miss. And then it'll be our mascot's birthday the next day, Parker T. Bear, another year old. And it's crazy because he just got his driver's license. So can you imagine a bear driving everywhere? <laughs> it's wild. Is there that one episode of Gravity Falls? Grunkle Stan has a C&I bear driving for him. I think Parker's a little bit better of a driver than that. <laughs> oh um, man! Does the do, what does the T stand for? Is it just the? the is this a Winnie the Pooh situation? It's the. It's absolutely <laughs> the. I mean, or you can do terrific. You can do tremendous. I mean, there's a lot of adjectives that go with it. He is. Uh, he's the best mascot of minor league baseball, <laughs> and he's an ordained minister. So if you ever get married in the future and you need that to happen, he can help you out when it comes. There to you that. go. The- there's a promotion for you. <laughs> we He actually did a couple weddings a few years ago, and I think he, he got a lot of it, and I, I think he could barely handle it. So I think he's going to take a little bit of a breather from doing that. He's he's more about just hanging out with everybody. He's out doing assembly, seeing Little Leagues right now. So he's getting ready for an amazing season. <laughs> yeah, we, we're definitely looking forward to it. I think I want to try to to tune in a lot more this coming season with the Grizzlies and, and Everybody else is a lot of fun to watch. The future is happening. It's coming. It's a lot of fun. We're, we're going to be on this year. So make sure you check it out. We'll have promotions about how to watch our games. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of great things with minor league baseball, MILB TV. It's going to be, uh, something that people are going to want to watch and we're very excited to have it. If you need any more information, always go to Fresno You can also follow the Grizzlies on our social media pages. Also, you can follow myself at rice cakes, 20, R I C E C A K E S two zero. Uh, we're always going to help you out about what's going on around Fresno, around minor league baseball, and I'm a sports nut. So if you ever have questions, comments, concerns, always help you out. Yeah, well, we appreciate you taking some time to chat with us, and we wish you the best of luck this season. We'll have appreciate to have you on as as we get through the season. Please, that'd be awesome. That would be amazing. Catch up, give us that inside scoop oh, down on the in the prospects. But Stephen, as always, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate everything that you do and, and the good work you do down there in Fresno and everybody down there in Fresno. Give them our love. We, we appreciate all that, all that cool. you do. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on and go Grizzlies. Yeah. And this has been Affected by Altitude, joined by Stephen Rice. I'm Skylar Timmons. We'll see you next time. Be sure to follow us and subscribe here on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platforms. New episodes every Monday and also every Rocky ever. Sometime we'll get you on every Rocky ever, too. You can chat about a a Rocky that you like. But uh, until next time, farewell!